the grinder, you, the individual, the person that you are inside will determine the outcome, whatever you're going to do in your life. So you must continue to grind harder. You must continue to find a way and make a way out of no way. Don't wait for a handout. Don't wait for someone to tell you to do it. Do it because you need to do it. Do it because it must be done. There are going to be all kinds of challenges that we all must face. You cannot live in this world without a challenge. You cannot live in this world without a struggle. Because with every struggle that you have been through, it will help you to be stronger. But you cannot give up. Don't be afraid of the hard work. Don't be afraid to grind a little bit harder. Don't be afraid to sweat a little bit. It's okay, man. This ain't the time to be sitting up there feeling sorry. This ain't the time to be saying you don't have what it takes. So if you get some setbacks, embrace them. Sure, every day is not going to be a good day for you. Every day is not going to always happen for you. But it's always something happening. But you got to make it happen for the right reasons. For every day of your life, you must continue to believe in yourself. For every day of your life, you must have enough faith and understanding that it's up to you to make that difference count. So continue to grind. Grind with everything you got. Be strong every day of your life. No matter what comes your way, keep grinding. Man, it's, it's so tough, um, you know, because I remember when I was young, and I didn't have my father, right, in the household. And we got, we became cool. And um, I remember I used to live my life and I had like, it was, it was like a resentment toward him, right? Because I couldn't understand why he wasn't there early on. I just couldn't understand it, right? And like when I would be home and we would experience certain things and me and my cousins would be asleep on the floor, Right. And it was certain questions and things at times that I wanted to ask my father and because he wasn't in the household. I couldn't ask him. So it created a resentment until one day I just asked. We were together and, you know, I just asked, like, man, what happened? You know, and he just shared with me what happened. Right. Like I was young. Your mother was young. Right. I ended up losing my mother. Right. And I was just scared. Right. And when he told me this situation, I could understand it, right? And for most people, it's like forgiveness is the hardest thing in the world. And when you see a son, when you see him coming up with his mother, or you see a father that's not present, a lot of times for me, I think now, man, what's that situation? And I want to understand it, right? Because I firmly believe as tough as the situation is, my teacher said this to me, my teacher who's my mentor, my eighth grade teacher. He said to me one day when I was in the eighth grade, because I was, we was talking about fatherhood and stuff like that. And some of the, my friends, they were talking about their fathers. We were just having a man conversation. And one of my friends said, like, man, my father don't care about me. He don't want me, right? Like, I'm in the world. I don't see him, right? And my teacher said to him, son, I don't think any man brings a kid into this world and don't think about him and don't love them and don't want them. And the kid was like, no, man, like, that's wrong, right? And he was like, I'm, I'm a man, I'm a father, I'm a husband, right? And when he said it, at the time I was young and I was like, I don't know. But now that I'm a father, right? I got two kids, or I got three little sisters, right? And it's this thing inside of me that, that makes me think like, he was, he was, it was true, it was real. But situations and circumstances happen sometimes that we can't understand. And it leaves a mother in a household or sometimes it leaves a father to be a single father, right? And when that happens, I think the village is important. It's like me, I got, I got a level of accountability and responsibility with my son, right? If my son plays on a team, right? And his kids on that team, that their fathers are not present, I feel like I have a responsibility and obligation not to be their father, right? But to fill a void, to be a positive male figure in that kid's life as much as possible. And not just look at the kid and see him drowning, 
and just be like, that's not my kid, I'll just let him drown, right? No, he's very much so my kid, right? Because God has put me here to be present in this kid's presence, so I'm gonna help him, right? And so it's just becoming a village around that mother or around that father to assist as much as possible to help that kid be shaped and molded in the right way, the principles. Because we live in a society where mediocrity is often rewarded. And he looked down at the 22 men and he says something about basically you all detest mediocrity. Mm -hmm. And he goes on to talk about this mediocrity and shit. I just sat back and I said, God, man, I want to be like these motherfuckers. I want to feel, because now I was projecting myself in those chairs. I want to, how can, how do y'all feel like right now? I want to feel like you do. You, you 22 men, I want to feel like that, man. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm tired of feeling the way I feel every day. I'm tired of how I feel. I'm tired of lying to myself, lying to people and being some piece of shit. And I always knew in the back of my mind, I could be something special. But I knew the work it was going to take was going to kill me. I was afraid of that. I was afraid of the brutality and the suffering I was going to have to endure. Mm -hmm. But I knew, I knew I could do something. But I'm like, I ain't trying to do that kind of work, man. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to do that. So I chose a path of, easy, of, of least resistance. So now my ideas, it, it became so haunting and daunting on me, my, myself. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Fucking done. You're fighting. We all have two people. We all have two people. And I'm not saying you're crazy. We have the easy voice, which is that 20% telling yourself that you're, I'm easy at 90% of my full potential, maybe 100% at that 20%. That's that voice that we all love. That's that very comfortable voice that, that's that mommy holding you saying, it's going to be okay. Doesn't care how good you are, just loves you. Just loves you no matter how messed up you are in life. That's where you want to be at. So that's that one voice. This other voice that we walk very far away from is a voice saying, hey, man, you ain't doing shit. So we try to get this voice out of our head completely. And we live over here in this lane. So what you have to do first is turn up this voice over here. 
the voice saying things to you that aren't nice. That it's in our head saying, you know what, man, dude, you're not, you're not doing shit. You're not, you're not a mountain. I mean, and it's not putting yourself down. People take this the wrong way in this new society. I'm not saying to put yourself down. I'm saying listen to the truth.